So let's talk about the highest blood sugar ever recorded in history. It was recorded in 2008 by a type one diabetic, a child named Michael Patrick Bunacor. Now think about what normal blood sugar is, okay? It's like 80 milligrams per deciliter. His blood sugars were 2,656 milligrams per deciliter. I mean, this is like astronomical. I mean, I've heard people having blood sugars of 300, 400, 500, and 600, but that's when they usually go into a coma. So this just blew me away of how high a blood sugar could actually get. Now realize you have insulin that is constantly buffering the sugar. It's, it's taking the sugar out of your blood constantly. And he was a type one diabetic, so he didn't have any insulin. Obviously he didn't take his medication. So his blood sugars just went, you know, kept going higher and higher. Now ingesting one gram of glucose, okay, will raise your blood sugars about roughly five milligrams per deciliter. So just think about how much sugar someone would have to consume to raise their blood sugars over 2,000 milligrams per deciliter. But again, you have to take in consideration insulin because insulin is going to come in there and take it out of the blood. But if you have insulin resistance or you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, that's going to be a problem because with insulin resistance, you might be pumping out all this insulin, but it's not working to lower your blood sugars, which is why the blood sugars start increasing. Now, today I want to talk about something very, very interesting that relates to blood sugars. It's not just sugar that will raise your blood sugars. It could also be stress. Now, let me explain. When you go through stress, your body needs quick energy. So your liver is going to start making glucose, okay? And it has nothing to do with your diet. You can be eating healthy foods, but your liver will start converting like protein, um, fat, ketones into glucose. And that process is called gluconeogenesis. Now, there's a really, really good test that could be done, uh, which measures an average blood sugar over two to three months. It's called A1C. And A1C um, basically measures how much of the protein in your blood is glycated or damaged from sugar. So when the sugar goes up in the blood, it destroys the protein. And this process is irreversible. Okay, it's permanent. So you have to now wait two to three months before that red blood cell has been dealt with by the body. So A1C is a really good um, measurement of the average of your blood sugars over you know, roughly three months. And it's a really good way to determine if someone is cheating on their diet too, because let's say you're doing great through the week and you're checking your blood sugars each day and everything comes out real good, but then on the weekends, you go off the program. Well, with A1C, you're measuring this average for three months. So you're gonna pick up those times that you cheated. But let's say for example, uh, you're not cheating and you're not eating sugar and you're eating really good. You're on a keto plan, you're doing intermittent fasting, but your A1C is not coming down. In fact, it's going up. Well, it could be stress because like I said before, cortisol is another thing that can cause your liver to start producing sugar even if you're on the ketogenic plan and not eating any sugar. So your body can get sugar from the diet or it can make it when you're under stress. So unfortunately, when people go through stress, they smoke, they take drugs, they eat poorly, they drink alcohol. And of course, none of these things lower the blood sugar, they just make things worse. So if this is your situation, let's say you cleaned up your diet, but your stress is too high and that is affecting your blood sugars, or you wake up in the morning and your blood sugars are high, despite not eating any sugar, a real simple remedy would be to exercise, okay? One good workout every single day will usually handle this excess amount of sugar that's being produced because of stress. And I'm talking about not just a tiny workout, but you know, at least a half hour to 40 minutes of a workout. Exercise reduces cortisol, exercise helps your sleep, Exercise also lowers your blood sugar directly because it's burning up that extra sugar in your blood. But also I wanna mention this, uh, if you do physical work around your yard or even in your house, that can even be a better form of exercise because you're handling a lot of the mental stress, uh, sometimes even more than getting on a treadmill, which you're just you know mechanically walking. So depending on the exercise you do, a really big part of this is 
taking your attention off the mental stress. Now, I want to mention two additional things that are really, really important. If you're sodium deficient, if you don't consume enough salt, that can keep your cortisol going higher. Cortisol does help control sodium. And so this is why when people go through stress, they might crave salty foods. If you are on a salt restricted diet, um, that could be one reason why your cortisols tend to go higher and that can also indirectly affect your blood sugar. So I'm just bringing up this point about sodium because a lot of times people don't consider sodium beneficial to helping reduce stress. And one common symptom of a sodium deficiency would be weakness and fatigue, as in keto fatigue, aka adrenal fatigue. So adrenal fatigue is the same thing as keto fatigue. And really both of those are a sodium deficiency because the person's not consuming enough salt. And of course, make sure you have the sea salt. Now, one last thing I want to add to that, you should also add potassium to that as well, a good amount of potassium, because potassium can not just lower cortisol, it can lower your blood sugars. It actually helps insulin resistance. So salt and potassium and exercise are a great way to keep your stress low and keep your A1C low. If you want a really good recommendation of how to get uh, enough potassium, I put a link down below in the description. Now, I think a really good video for you to watch next is the one that I did on sea salt. Check it out.